Many of us hire financial advisors because we want to do what is best for our money. We want to protect our hard-earned dollars. We want to keep it secure. We want it to grow so we have enough for our retirement. And we hope that our trusty financial advisor can do all that for us. I mean, they are the experts, right? But I'm here to tell you, you might want to reassess your assumptions. Your financial advisor might not be all that they're cracked out to be. So in that spirit, let me share with you 10 reasons why you might want to consider firing your financial advisor. And hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. The number one reason why you need to fire a financial advisor. I'm not saying all, but many individuals who proclaim themselves as financial advisors are actually salespeople in disguise. Most advisors make money every time you buy an investment or a financial product. It pretty much works the same way as to how car salespeople make their money. Salespeople at the car dealership make a commission on each car they sell. And sometimes because a dealership is trying to get rid of certain cars quicker, most often to make room for new incoming vehicles, they might incentivize certain cars with higher commission rates. You can guess which cars these salespeople will try to push onto you when you're shopping for a new car, right? The one with the highest commission. In the same way, this commission model in the investment world is one of the primary reasons why I don't like financial and investment advisors. There is a blatant conflict of interest. Most often, you're going to an investment advisor so he or she can advise you on the best investment to grow your net worth, based on your life stage, risk tolerance, and goals. You're trusting that the financial advisor has your best interest at heart. Instead, the financial advisor who is paid via commission will push funds that have the highest commission rate. This is a reason why the last time you spoke to a so-called financial advisor, they likely mention products like annuities or universal life insurance. Products that made tons of money for them, but not for you. Bottom line, be hyper aware. Many financial advisors are salespeople in disguise. The number two reason why you need to fire a financial advisor. Many use fear as means to sell new products or control existing clients. Most often way too much fear from my perspective. This is one of the biggest things I load most about the financial industry. They love to make you feel incompetent when it comes to managing your own money and investments. They want to make you feel like you can't live without them. They want you to be completely dependent upon them. Sounds like a toxic relationship if you ask me. If you were to even bring up the possibility of managing your own money, you'll get fear mongering responses like this. Really? You want to manage your own money? That's crazy. You wouldn't perform brain surgery on yourself, would you? I mean, how would you respond to that? Of course not, would you? Would anyone with common sense do brain surgery on themselves? Not only is it impossible, to compare DIY brain surgery to DIY investing is ridiculous. It's a completely flawed analogy because they involve vastly different levels of complexity, risk, specialization, regulation, and access to resources. Also, as stated earlier, while it is physically impossible to perform brain surgery on yourself, it is not physically impossible to manage your own investments. Millions of people are already doing it and doing it well. Bottom line, a relationship based on fear is not a healthy relationship. It is a toxic one. Don't stay in a toxic relationship with your financial advisor. The number three reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. They have a tendency to overcomplicate money. When we think about good health, it's easy for our minds to gravitate towards the latest fats. Paleo diet, superfoods, intermittent fasting, T94 all-purpose resistance training. I made that last one up, but I'm sure if I scour the internet, I'll find something close to that. I'm sure some of these have a good place and time, and many are actually good programs. However, if we're looking to have a simple, healthy life, many are just too overcomplicated. Most health professionals would say if we want to improve our health, there are actually just a few simple habits we need to master. Eat whole foods, exercise regularly, sleep well, and minimize stress. And if we do these things consistently, we will be healthier than 99% of people out there. But Simple is hard. We don't like simple solutions because we're all subconsciously looking for that secret edge, the secret shortcut. Thus, many financial advisors who deem themselves smart love to use overly complex financial jargons and terminologies. It makes them appear knowledgeable and creates a sense of expertise, which leads to the next reason why you want to fire your financial advisor. A quick interruption before we move on. If you haven't yet downloaded your free copy of my 10-step guide to securing your family's financial future, I highly recommend you do so today. Not only is this a great free resource for your financial journey, but you'll also be joining my email newsletter. Newsletter where you can connect with me directly, as well as be the first to know regarding any new services or products I plan on offering in the future. Please go to my website at financialtortoise.com and download your free copy today. I also have a link in the description below. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. The number four reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. In the line of overcomplicating money, they over-engineer complex solutions. After listening to your financial concerns, your desires, and your goals, they go back to their secret layer and come back with what they would claim is a perfectly designed portfolio for all your needs. But most often, what they're recommending is an excessively complex portfolio with numerous assets, funds, or investment vehicles most you can't understand or sometimes even pronounce. It has fancy titles like disruptive, biotech, emerging, and balanced within them. And when you ask them why you need all these funds, they'll give you a well-rehearsed answer, most often one you can't understand. 
the asset allocation is perfectly aligned to your time horizon and risk tolerance. We've incorporated all of our proprietary studies to design the ideal 40 fund portfolio that not only manages volatility, but potential international political exposure as well. I mean, what does that mean, right? It might be better if they were just straightforward with you and say they're just adding all these funds in your portfolio because it makes them feel smart. And also their bosses are pushing it on them because corporate is trying to maximize bottom line profit. At least that one we can understand. And the theme of profit for financial advisors, let's get into the next reason to fire your financial advisor. The number five reason why you need to fire your financial advisor they are expensive. Complex solutions most often come at a cost. Actively managed funds are known to charge anywhere between 1-2% to expense ratios. The expense ratio represents the annual cost of managing the fund and is expressed as a percentage of the fund's assets. This means that between 1-2% to of your investment is deducted each year to pay the fund manager to run the fund. On a $100,000 portfolio, that comes out to $1,000 to $2,000 annually. Also, actively managed funds tend to have a higher portfolio turnover compared to index funds. The portfolio turnover ratio is a rate in which assets in a fund are bought and sold by the portfolio managers. And high turnover results in additional trading costs, transaction fees, and capital gains taxes, reducing the net return for the investors. And compounded over many years, these higher costs can be substantial. All right, you might be saying, if they're charging you so much, they must at least be getting you great returns, right? Which leads to the next reason why you should fire your financial advisor. Number six reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. A sad fact. Many can't beat the market. Most financial advisors or investment advisors who are paid to deliver higher returns in the stock market as a whole can't do it. In the last 20 years, the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the US stock market, has delivered an average annual return of about 10%. So in order to beat the market, a financial advisor would need to design a portfolio that beats this number. And this is not easy. The financial advisor must not only be skilled at selecting the right investments, but designing the ideal asset allocation. In addition, adjusting it regularly in order to respond to the market trends. A very hard thing to do. Bottom line, a very few financial advisors have the skill and knowledge necessary to beat an index. According to Spiva scorecard, the index versus active scorecard produced by the S&P slash Dow Jones over the past 15 year period, 93% of actively managed large cap funds underperform the S&P 500. The majority of these actively managed funds had either poor performance and high fees or average performance and low fees, but only about one out of every 10 perform well on both fronts. I mean, can it get any worse? Not only do they charge way more than they need to, they can't even produce better returns. It's like paying $2,000 for a steak at a fancy restaurant, but you get one that is worse than what you get at Denny's. Or worse, one that is completely burnt. The number seven reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. In the line of charging too much and not performing, the incentive between you and the financial advisors are most often misaligned. Apart from the upfront commission, most financial investment advisors make money via the management fee over the investment they manage. This is called the Asset Under Management Model, or AUM for short. And in the AUM model, the investment advisor's primary fee doesn't come from the actual performance of the fund. Rather, it's the size of the fund that matters. The bigger the fund, the more money he or she makes. It doesn't matter if the fund is doing better or worse than the market. For example, let's say you have a financial advisor managing your $2 million portfolio and they charge you 1% for managing it. That's $20,000 annually. And let's say your portfolio drops by 20% this year. Your $2 million portfolio is now $1.6 million. You technically lost $400,000, but your financial advisor will still get paid. It might not be the original $20,000, now reduced to $16,000, but they still get paid. Your advisor's strategy didn't work out well at all, yet they still make money off of you while you lose. And this can bleed into general money advice as well. Let's say you earned an extra $100,000 and you're debating the choice between paying off your high interest debt or giving it to your financial advisor to invest. What do you think the advisor will say or be tempted to say? While paying off your high interest debt is in your best financial interest, the advisor might advise that you invest that money in their latest fund. Why? because it will make more money for them. Bottom line, understand your financial advisor's incentive. The number eight reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. Index funds take actively managed funds to the cleaners. With all the talk about why you need to fire your financial advisor, you might be asking, then what? Where should I invest my money? This is where I want to introduce you to my personal favorite investment vehicle, the index fund. An index fund simply is a mutual fund that tracks the performance of an established financial benchmark, such as the S&P 500 or the CRSP US Total Market Index. And this, even a simple-minded man like me can understand. An index fund, unlike actively managed funds, are passively managed, which means they don't engage in any type of market timing. They simply buy and hold all the securities included in the financial benchmark. 
In essence, you can bypass the complexities of stock selection that are outside your scope or knowledge by buying a share of every public company in the market through an index fund. And most research shows that investing in index funds can lead to higher returns with lower risk over time compared to actively managed mutual funds. As stated earlier, index funds have outperformed the majority of actively managed US stock mutual funds. And in a way, they also offer a level of protection better than actively managed funds because they are so well diversified. Your investments are spread out across multiple sectors and industries to help balance out any potential losses in one area or the other. What's more, this is my favorite. Index fund fees tend to be much less expensive than active managed funds. I currently hold the majority of my investment in an index fund called VTSAX. Vanguard's total stock market index fund, and it charges an expense ratio of only 0.04%. Now compare that to actively managed funds of 1-2%. to The combination of lower costs and potential higher returns is why it makes sense not to hire a financial advisor, but instead invest on your own through low-cost index funds. The number 9 reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. And this one's one of my favorite. At the end of the day, no one cares more about your money than you do. When we face a challenge, it's easier to hand over our problems to someone else. Instead of trying to fix our broken toilet ourselves, it's easier to hire a plumber. Instead of trying to change out the battery in our car, it's easier to hire a car mechanic. And instead of handling our own money and managing our own investments, it's easier to hire a financial advisor. But I say don't. The risk that comes with a bad plumber or bad car mechanic is that you'll need to bring someone new later, thus costing you a few extra hundred dollars or even a thousand dollars. But the risk with the bad financial advisor can cost you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. You care about your money more than anyone else does. So it's up to you to make sure that everything is working as efficiently as possible in order for you to be successful over time. This was a harsh lesson that I learned in my 20s. I've made every possible money mistake you can think of. I've leased a car without calculating the true cost. I took out unnecessary student loans, and I allowed financial advisors and fancy investment firms to invest my money in investments I didn't understand. It wasn't until I was at the brink of financial catastrophe in my late 20s that I started to pay serious attention to money. I started to read every personal finance book I could get my hands on. It took me a while, but eventually I learned what made sense to me and began developing a financial plan without the need of a financial advisor. So take responsibility for your own financial situation instead of trusting that others have your best interests at heart. Number 10 reason why you need to fire your financial advisor. You can manage your own money. You don't need someone with 14 different letters after their name to manage your money for you. At one point in my life, I believed that people who knew how money and investing worked were just naturally smarter than me. They could spew out financial jargons like hedge, leverage, stocks, and bonds, and I would have no idea what they are talking about. It wasn't until years later, I realized that they also didn't have any idea what they are talking about. Financial knowledge isn't a born talent. It's an acquired skill, and you can develop it through financial education. Thank you guys for watching. In the spirit of leveling up our money knowledge, please check out a few of my favorite money books here. Until next time, all the best.